Good evening. Last night, after President Trump walked out of a White House meeting with Democrats and gave a rambling, angry, defensive, and misleading press conference in the Rose Garden, I described it as not normal, as in not normal behavior for a president. After what happened today, though, I got to say, I think I was wrong, because tonight we know that by the standards of this president, that kind of behavior is normal, especially now that it's happened for a second straight day. It's normal, meaning typical. It occurs with regularity and predictability. It happens over and over again. It doesn't seem like he can help himself. Today at a press event with farmers and ranchers, the President of the United States, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, let the moment, which after all was supposed to be about helping the very people his trade policies are hurting, dissolve into another airing of grievances about himself. Like last time, it was something House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said that set him off. The event started with the President making what was supposed to be the headline announcement, except it wasn't exactly true. So today I'm announcing that I have directed Secretary Purdue to provide $16 billion in assistance to America's farmers and ranchers. It all comes from China. Well, keep in mind, it doesn't. The money comes from tariffs on Chinese exports, which American importers and consumers pay. In any case, he pretty quickly digressed, and with those farmers and ranchers still standing behind him, returned to yesterday's walkout and the woman who'd obviously gotten under his skin, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. Here's a collection of remarks from throughout the event as he kept returning to the subject, trying to emphasize that he was very calm yesterday, not upset at all. I was so calm. You all saw me minutes later. I was at a news conference. I was extremely calm. I was probably even more so in that room. So I walked into the cabinet room. You had the, uh, the group, crying Chuck, Crazy Nancy. Tell you what, I've been watching her, and I have, I have been watching her for a long period of time. She's not the same person. Uh, she's lost it. She reminded me of uh, Beto. She actually <laughs> reminded me of Beto, maybe a little bit more. So I was extremely calm, very much like I am right now. And it was sad when I watched Nancy all moving, the movement and the hands and the craziness. I don't want to say crazy Nancy, because if I say that, you're going to say it's a copy of Crazy Bernie, and that's no good, because he, Bernie is definitely crazy. But, but uh, I did it because we had this instance at least once before where I was very, very calm on another occasion, and they walked out to the sticks. And they said it was horrible. He was ranting. He was raving. He was pounding the table. The reason I didn't do that is because I didn't want them to say I would do that, but they said it anyway. This was an event about farmers, the people standing behind him. Then he went off on the woman who leads a co-equal branch of government and is second in line of succession. He suggests she's crazy mocks what he clearly believes are physical disabilities or perhaps signs of aging. He then describes himself like this. I'm an extremely stable genius. Okay. Okay. Number one, anyone who is an extremely stable genius, whatever that means, would not feel the need to describe themselves as such. I mean, if you're stable, you don't really need to go around announcing it. You're just stable. Nothing breeds confidence and a sense of stability than the leader of the free world insisting he's stable, and not for the first time, I should add. Oh, and if you're a genius, ditto. Geniuses don't go around with license plates that they paid extra to say genius. They don't need to because they're smarter than that. Number two, anyone who is an extremely stable genius would not rise to take the bait of his opponents every single time. That's not a counter puncher, a counter puncher that's a sucker. And number three, if you are an extremely stable genius or even just a stable genius, you would not do what the president then proceeded to do today. He asked his subordinates to publicly proclaim his stable temperament. It's what I imagine a family dinner with Kim Jong-un is like. Kellyanne, what was my temperament yesterday? Let me ask you this, uh, Mercedes, you're always a straight talker. You were in that room yesterday? Yes, sir. What was my attitude when I walked in? Did I ever scream? Larry, you were there. There were many people there, by the way, many people. We can get you 25, 20 other people to say this. Uh, what was my attitude yesterday at the meeting? Hi, Sarah. We're just talking about the meeting. You were there yesterday? Yes, were you? Sir. Yes. Just come forward. Were you there, Hogan? You, you know about it. He's calling on Hogan Gidley. Now, in fairness to the president, political opposition leaders can be pretty irritating, especially when they do what Speaker Pelosi did this morning, clearly pushing his hot buttons. But the president, again, stormed out. I think, what, first pound the table, walk out the door. 
next time have the TV cameras in there while I have my say. That didn't work for him either. And now this time, another ten temper tantrum. Uh, uh, again, I pray for the President of the United States. I wish that his family or his administration or his staff would have an intervention for the good of the country. Okay, I mean, that's certainly a jab suggesting that the president needs an intervention. But is it any worse than a member of the opposition shouting you lie during the State of the Union, as one did uh, to President Obama, or a member of the opposition comparing you to a used car salesman, as many did to Richard Nixon? Presidents have been called all sorts of names by all sorts of lawmakers for a very long time on both sides of the aisle, and they've all managed to do their jobs in spite of it, until it seems now. Late today, Speaker Pelosi took another swipe, tweeting, quote, when the extremely stable genius, in quote, starts acting more presidential, I'll be happy to work with him on infrastructure, trade, and other issues. More on all this from CNN's Jim Acosta, who joins us now. All right, Jim, I mean, yeah. the, so the scene today at the White House, it was bizarre, even though it come, it's come to be normal, to go, I mean, to go around the room trying to get your subordinates to back you up, it just was weird. It was strange, and if you're if you're trying to demonstrate that uh, Nancy Pelosi is not under your skin, I don't I don't know if the president accomplished that. Obviously, he demonstrated that uh, she has gotten under his skin. I talked to a source close to the White House uh, who advises the president earlier this evening, who said uh, maybe she hasn't gotten under his skin, but she's gotten his attention, and that is somebody who is uh, close to the president, and so they they understand, I think, inside. Uh, the president's team of advisors and so on, uh, that there, there does appear to be some sparring going on between President Trump and Nancy Pelosi. And, and perhaps it's not all uh, going in his direction at this point. I, I will say I talked to a couple of people who were in that room uh, earlier this afternoon, Anderson. They, they don't want to speak on the record, but they're saying, listen, we feel like we were telling the truth and we told the president that he was being calm uh, during that meeting with Nancy Pelosi. Uh, one of these officials said, listen, it was Nancy Pelosi who was shell-shocked that uh, the president called her out uh, in front of her team and in front of other people in the room, uh, and, and that she's the one who should be explaining for her demeanor uh, during that meeting. Uh, but Anderson, I, I will tell you, uh, talking to my sources earlier today, uh, there's something else going on here, and I think it's important to note, and that is that some of this is tactical. I talked to a source who talks to the president regularly who said that the president is trying to up the rhetoric in this fight with House Democrats in the hope that he'll ramp up the pressure so high that they will essentially put up or shut up on this matter of impeachment. And I think, Anderson, I think that points to a very interesting aspect in all of this. The president does not like being in this in between no man's land that Nancy Pelosi has him right now. Remember, there are a lot of House Democrats who want her to go all the way and go for impeachment. She has stopped short of that and said, I like this this place where the president is right now, where he's just under perpetual uh, investigation. The president, I think, has shown in the last 48 hours, he doesn't like being in that place. And he's been demonstrating that over and over again uh, in these outbursts in front of the cameras. Yeah. Anderson. Jim Acosta, thanks very much.